Today we bust 100 myths in the game Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario 3D World, and Bowser's Fury, seeing all kinds of funny Mario secrets and mods, and also things you can do in the game normally. Myth 1. If you edit the game to set your gravity value to zero, you'll keep moving in the same direction when you pop out of a clear pipe until you come in contact with something else. This can make you get so high that the level and the sky starts to disappear and all you see is the bright sun. If you make a Goomba upside down and you place it into the game, it will actually fly away upwards looking for some ground to land on and stay safe. Double cherries are not actually in the game Bowser's Fury, but you can add them from Super Mario 3D World and they do work and you can have up to five total Marios and if you try to get one more then the game crashes. Something similar happens in Super Mario 3D World with the double cherry limit. The level Double Cherry Pass also has a maximum of five Marios, but levels without Double Cherries normally crash if you get even a single Double Cherry. This is because each individual level actually has a set limit for the number of Double Cherry clones that you can have, and you can edit this value. If you fall off the world map in Super Mario 3D World, you're teleported back to the first level of the world. And if you remove the first level of a world and you jump off the world map, the game crashes because it can't bring you back to the first level of the world because there isn't a first level of the world. If you raise up the first level of the world and then you jump off the world map, you actually spawn at the higher location before you start falling and you can enter the level from up here. Completing the level makes you start falling eventually after you exit the level like this. In the first Bowser boss fight, if you play with zero gravity, the level disappears once you get high enough. Not only that, but if you go behind Bowser and have him aim his fireballs at you still, Bowser can rotate his torso around so far that he looks like the head of an owl. Even though green stars aren't in Bowser's Fury, you can add them to the game and Mario can collect them, but all it does is make a sound when you collect them. Bowser's Fury doesn't have checkpoint flags in the game, but if you do add a checkpoint flag, like they can heal little Mario and make him bigger like they normally do, but Mario doesn't actually respawn at the checkpoint flag if he dies. If you link Mario to a checkpoint flag in Bowser's Fury, then for some reason the checkpoint flag will show Rosalina's symbol on it, and don't worry about Mario here, he's very safe and very comfortable. Remember what happens if you exit a clear pipe with zero gravity the way that you keep moving in the same direction? Well, if you exit a mystery box when the timer runs out, then Mario starts floating up uncontrollably. Enemies can actually be added to the world map in Super Mario 3D World, but these enemies don't damage Mario, they just keep trying to walk into him. You can also add power-ups to the world map by modding the game, and even though it looks like these power-ups work properly at first because Mario is transforming, you can see that these power-ups don't go into storage, and if you go into a level, you are still actually Little Mario. So these power-ups, they only look like they work on the world map, but they don't actually work when it comes to playing the real game. I wanted to try adding Plessy to the world map because I thought that it would have been hilarious to ride Plessy on the world map, but unfortunately the game crashes when I try to get onto Plessy here. Also, trampolines are incredibly weird. They are so much weirder than I thought they would be on the world map. In Bowser's Fury, I was able to get four Marios onto a Plessy and the game would still work fine, but if you have a total of five Marios and you try to get onto a Plessy, then the game crashes. This is similar to what happens in Super Mario 3D World, where you could get onto Plessy fine with four normal players and you could do this in multiplayer normally in the game, but if you have a bunch of double cherries active, then that can crash the game. Here's what happens if you remove the goop from Bowser's Fury and you jump into where this poisonous ocean normally is. You fall through fine, but eventually Mario hits a death area. This is actually something that happens in most levels of the game, where death areas are added to make sure that you can't break the game too badly. For example, in World 1-2, the area with the goal pole is actually a little bit behind this wall at the start of the level, but you can't float over there normally because it is too far away, and there's also a death area that would stop you from getting there if you could float that far. The collision of some objects in this game is pretty funny. You can actually increase the speed at which Mario is launched out of a pipe, and you can increase the speed to be fast enough so that Mario is launched through a wall or even several layers of wall. You can also increase the speed of other things like dash panels and then you can run up a ramp to get a nice boost and end up landing in some really cool spots that look like cool trick jumps that Mario is doing. The game Bowser's Fury can actually handle loading a lot of objects at a time and I filled up a good portion of an island with little kittens but this does make the game lag quite a bit when you're playing the game and this was one of the most popular videos on my channel when I first made this so I'm really glad that people enjoyed this. Just like many games, a lot of objects have collision detection in this game from one side only. 
So if you manage to get inside a solid object, you can often just walk out of it without any problems, but you won't be able to get back in. Clear pipes can be connected together for very, very, very long stretches, and I made a video a little while ago about the world's longest pipe in Super Mario 3D World. I've been thinking of remaking that sometime and making it even longer. If you make a goal pole upside down in Super Mario 3D World, it looks ridiculous. You can see that the Mario flag here is still at the top, but it's actually upside down and it looks like a W, so it's Wario instead of Mario. You can't walk into the bottom of the goal pole, which is now the top of the goal pole, and if you try to jump against the goal pole, you'll just slide down it. And if you jump to where the top of the goal pole normally is, then you'll end up at the bottom of the goal pole, and you'll start to slide up it, and you'll start to do your victory celebration here, which also ends up looking strange. Goal poles can also be added to Bowser's Fury by modding the game, but if you try to get one, then the game crashes because there are no goal poles in this version of the game. If you make a pipe completely upside down, then you can't enter it from the top, even though a prompt like this appears and you can't enter it from the bottom either by trying to jump up into it. Tilting it slightly can make you either slide off of the pipe or enter the pipe in a very unusual and unexpected manner. Something that people really loved in a past video of mine is what happens if you have an upside down cloud platform. Because cloud platforms, they normally launch you up out of a cannon once you enter them, but here's what happens if you enter an upside down cloud platform. Yes, it launches you from its bottom like that. How many enemies can you fit onto a single spot? The answer is a lot, basically as many as the game can handle. But if you put hundreds of Goombas onto a single spot, they're all very well behaved and they move around a bit, kind of looking like a cake, until you get close to them. Once you get close to them, they start to push each other off the blocks like a Goomba fountain that is erupting. A lot of people wonder if there's some kind of pattern to which mystery box in the Toad House gives the better reward, thinking that you should alternate between the big box and the little box and that gives the best reward. It turns out that according to the game, both of these boxes are actually the same object and each box gives you the good reward about 75% of the time, no matter which box you choose. That means that odds are that you'll get the better reward whether you pick the small box every time, or the big box every time, or you alternate every time, or you pick a box randomly every time. Your choice doesn't really matter in this level since both boxes are the same object. There's something funny about bullet bills in this game. There's a property called is validate collision that has to be true for bullet bills to collide with anything other than Mario. If this value isn't checked off, then bullet bills will go through everything without being hurt or exploding, except for Mario, and they still do hurt Mario. This isn't normally possible in the game, but if you want bullet bill launchers into the first boss fight of Super Mario 3D World, then they will actually damage Bowser, and you can actually safely defeat Bowser from a distance like this, making it a bit of an unfair boss fight. Some bosses like Pom Pom aren't actually damaged by lava, but other bosses like the Big Galoombas are immediately destroyed when they fall into lava. There are very few levels in the game with a goal pole that runs away from you, but with a bit of work this can actually be added to any level, you just have to choose the path that the goal pole follows. In the level Searchlight Sneak, there are bullet bills that are fired out at you if a spotlight notices you, but when I was playing this game last year with a mod that I made where Luigi's jump height doubles every time you complete a level, I noticed is this. The bullet bills that get launched at you when you're noticed are actually just floating there and doing nothing before you get noticed, and the spotlight actually comes from a ball of light like this. The way that the level Bowser's Highway Showdown has the illusion of being an infinite path where you chase Bowser down is actually that there are three levels of highway that you chase Bowser down. All of the levels are different except for the last one. When you make it to the third level, that one starts repeating by teleporting you back to the start of the third level once you reach the end of it where the warp box is. You can actually get Captain Toad onto Plessy, and this was done in a mod made by Prince Nova that I've played through in a past video. Collecting a power-up as Captain Toad crashes the game, if the power-up is anything other than a mushroom. Even though Giga Mushrooms aren't available in Bowser's Fury, you can add them to the game and they do work normally here, making Mario bigger for a time. Fire Bros normally throw fireballs, and with some funny model editing, you can make it look like the Fire Bros are throwing Plessy. Since there are so many Plessies in Lake Lapcat, this looks like this is where all the Plessies are coming from. It's because the Fire Bros are throwing them all into the ocean here. You can also replace the fireballs with dash panels, bob bombs, birds, and even Fury Bowsers being thrown at you, but this is just the model being changed. Even though Proto Plants normally do damage Mario, on the world map, all they do is push Mario away when they attack at him. Even these spiky enemies can't hurt Mario on the world map when he walks into them, and if Mario gets a superstar power up, he can actually defeat them while he is invincible like this, so it's funny that that damage only works one way. One of the only things that can hurt Mario on the world map is this spiky ball over here. If Mario goes into this clear pipes, he will take damage when he 
he comes in contact with the spiky ball, but if he goes in again, he will not get defeated even though he is small. The spike blocks that extend out spikes like this can also damage Mario, but a big explosion from a lot of ball bombs surprisingly won't hurt him. But all these are things that don't normally appear on the world map, so it's really interesting to see what happens when you mod the game like this. Mario cannot enter a skate power-up while he is giant. However, if Mario goes into this skate first and then he gets a Mega Mushroom that turns him giant, you'll see a very funny animation of giant Mario riding around inside a regular sized skate. Also, if you get the Mega Mushroom while you are falling in this skate over here, then Mario will play a falling animation while he is giant and riding around inside this skate like this. You might know that after you beat the game, it keeps track of how quickly you finish every level. If you edit the level to start at the goal pole immediately and complete the level in zero seconds, then the game will actually not update your new record because it doesn't store a time of zero seconds to clear a level. The lowest time that you can get is one second, so you have to wait at least one second before you jump onto the goal pole if you wanted that to be your lowest time for clearing the level. These trampolines by default have a jump value of zero, so if you jump onto these trampolines, then Mario will get stuck there unless they've been edited to make him bounce higher. There's no way for Mario to bounce off once he is on a trampoline with a jump height of zero so he can be stuck here forever. Jump panels are a little different. If a jump panel has a value of zero then that will just push you to the side when you stand on it and press the A button. You can give either the trampoline or the jump panel a very high value that is much higher than Mario's jump height and you'll shoot up very high into the sky far away from the level by modding the game. If you enter a warp box as Giant Mario on a skate, it takes a bit longer for the skate to disappear compared to if regular Mario enters a warp box on a skate because the game first plays the animation of Mario shrinking down as he enters the warp box before the skate disappears. One question that so many people have been wondering and asking about, and I have shown this in a past video, is what happens if you try and go into a goal pole as Giant Mario in Super Mario 3D World? And unfortunately, he doesn't break it and he can't use it. It's just an object that he can't interact with until he shrinks down. Those of you that have seen my playthrough of Super Mario 3D World Floor is Lava might already know this, but you can actually safely ride this skate power up on lava. And yeah, our good friend Mayro made an extremely difficult level where the floor and everything is all lava and you have to ride on a skate. That was a really fun level to play through. You might know that Giant Mario can destroy pipes when you pass by them, but you can also destroy pipes as Giant Mario when you're inside the skate, which might be a little surprising. Mario can actually use the skate power up on the world map in Super Mario 3D World if the skate power up is added there, even though this is something that's not normally possible in the game. You might know that this gold pipe in the level Contour Canyon takes you to a secret room where you can get some coins, but if you use my Princess Peach floats forever mode, you can see that the secret room is actually just a bit farther away from the level out here, and many sub areas in levels of this game are just a little bit away from the main level like this because they are all loaded together in one level. Do you remember this flat part of the shadow section in the level Shadow Play Alley? The way that this works is the actual piranha plants and fuzzies are all back here a bit away from the level, and there are invisible walls making it so that you can't jump off of the level, but the camera doesn't move back here so you can normally only see the shadows when you're playing this game. With my infinite floating princess peach mod, you can come back here and see what's actually going on in the level. For some reason, in the level Puff Prod Peaks, when I was exploring around this level, looking up high and going out of bounds and looking for random things, there's just a random cube way up here. Why do you think this cube is here? You guys can let me know in a comment. This wall in the level Double Cherry Pass goes up incredibly high for some reason. And what's even more surprising than that is there's actually collision up here, so you can walk up here if you can get up here. A lot of unreachable objects objects in this game don't have collision, and normally there is an invisible wall that prevents you from getting up here anyways. A lot of people might have already guessed how these cloud platforms work in this section, but here's what actually happens with an edited camera angle so you can see what is really going on. You can edit Super Mario 3D World to bring regular characters into the Captain Toad levels, but for some reason the first time that I tried this, this is what happened. Princess Peach was just being shut up extremely quickly from the pipe when the level starts, but after that it was working fine. You probably know that there is a giant spinning Bowser at the center of Lake Lapcat in Bowser's Fury, but if you edit your gravity or jump height and you get up high enough, then you might be surprised to learn that there's actually an invisible platform above this Bowser that you can stand on. And if you're crazy enough like I am, then you can actually bring over some cats to this invisible platform above Bowser in Bowser's Fury. The tanks and block steppers in the auto-scrolling castle level in World 2 are interesting. They 
they don't keep going on forever. And if you remove the auto scrolling from this level, then you can actually see that the tanks and block steppers eventually stop moving once they reach the end of their path. Because of how the files for this game and other similar Nintendo Switch games work, it's pretty easy to port other levels and maps to Super Mario 3D World using the program Switch Toolbox. As an example, here's a mod that brings Yoshi's Tropical Island from Mario Party Superstars into Super Mario 3D World. Another really funny Mario animation is what happens if you become Giant Mario while in a skate and you start going upstairs. Mario just ends up walking angrily as if he doesn't notice that he has the skate power up active still. I was really wondering what would happen in Super Mario 3D World if we made Plessy upside down and I was a bit worried that it would be normal at first once we hopped onto Plessy because Plessy became upright for a moment. But once we actually started moving, Plessy ran to the right and then Plessy was going absolutely wild and we had a great upside down ride through the level on Plessy. Meowsers can actually be added to any level in the game, not just the Great Tower of Bowserland where you see them normally. The Meowsers that you add to these new levels can also be easily defeated with POW blocks similar to the one that you defeat in the Great Tower of Bowserland. Even if Mario takes a Mega Mushroom to become a giant, Meowsers is actually one enemy that a giant Mario can't defeat by walking into it. However, bombs are very, very effective at taking out Meowsers, and the explosions don't even have to be very close to the Meowsers for them to get defeated. Remember how weird upside down goal poles were? Well, they get even weirder when they're slanted at strange angles. You slide down the goal pole at an angle, and the camera moves into an angle that you don't normally see when you complete a level, and you see this strange celebration like this. You know how Bowser's normally moving away from you in the level Bowser's Highway Showdown? Well, if he is facing the wrong way to start, then he keeps pushing you like this until eventually he'll push you out of bounds into a death area and Mario loses a life. This room normally has two baseballs in it, and if you light up every single tile in the room then you get a green star as a reward. I added about 99 baseballs here and set them into motion, and when they come in contact with one another they start bouncing each other around. I was wondering how long these balls would bounce for, and if it would be possible for these balls to bounce high enough to make it all the way up the steps and reach the top step and light up all the steps. Eventually, I was surprised to see that the balls did in fact reach the top step and light up everything. One of the fastest ways to move in Super Mario 3D World, and this is something that you could do in the normal game without modding the game, is to repeatedly press the crouch button as fast as you can while you are moving on ice. You'll gain a lot of speed and you can move really quickly, and you can also travel a great distance after doing this if you have a propeller box, and you can skip a lot of the level very quickly too. There's a similar trick that you can do not on ice called crouch boosting, which is very tough on the hands to do where you crouch, uncrouch, and jump in rapid succession. And if you do this a few times in a row, you start to gain a lot of speed. If you're moving at an angle away from the direction that you're facing, then you'll start to gain more speed in Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. This is called vectoring, and this is most obvious if you're doing a long jump or a rolling long jump from a high distance, like in the level Trick Trap Tower. And it will become even more obvious that you're gaining speed while vectoring if the distance that you're traveling is even greater when you're vectoring like this. If you horizontally stretch out a Goomba, it will look like a wide log, and it will spin around like a wild propeller blade when it goes through a clear pipe. It is nice that we have clear pipes in this game so that we can see stuff like this. Another funny thing to flip upside down is these Goombas on float tubes in Bowser's Fury because the float tubes are actually in the right place but the Goombas are underwater and I really hope that these upside down Goombas are okay down there. Dash panels actually work normally in Bowser's Fury even if they're flipped upside down which is a bit surprising to see. If you add upside down Prince Bullies to the game they crash down like this when the boss fight starts like falling asteroids at random angles. If you rotate Boom Boom and you place him into the game, he'll show up upright once the fight starts, but once he starts spinning his arms around, you'll see that his arms are spinning around at the wrong angle. If you bring Mario clones to Cappy at the start of the game, Super Mario Odyssey, you'll get to see both of your Marios in the cutscene while talking to Cappy. If you remove the barrier from the first Brutal boss fight over here, you can actually have the little rabbit Brutal follow you down. And this Brutal goes surprisingly fast when it is going down this slope here as it chases you. It's actually scared me a few times. And by the way, a charge and chuck cannot hurt the Brutal, unfortunately. If you capture Bowser, you can't damage the Brutal, but you can damage a charge and chuck. And if you defeat the Brutal while you're in the wrong spot, then you're both teleported back to where you're normally supposed to be after the boss fight. If you jump off of the level as Bowser here, this is what happens. Oh! <laughs> 
What? What are they doing down there? Bowser is too tired for gravity to affect him. If you bring a motorcycle to the brutal boss fight, this can happen. <laughs> I got onto the motorcycle at the perfect moment. This happens if you get onto the- Oh, what? Why did I take damage? What is happening? I'm taking damage. I guess you're not invincible on the motorcycle. Maybe he was just very surprised. Maybe he's never seen a Mario Odyssey player on a motorcycle before. Oh, somehow I knocked off one of the hats. This is actually a nice challenge. Try beating all bosses while on the motorcycle. If you try to go down a pipe while on a motorcycle, you just leave your motorcycle behind and you still do go down the pipe. Sometimes when you mod boss fights, crazy things like this can happen where the bosses just run away from the level and don't come back. Where's he going? Where's he going? That's the right one. That's the one that I'm supposed to chase. Is he going to come back? He just flew away from the level! For most normal power-ups, if one Mario clone gets the power-up, all Marios get that power-up. But with the Giga Mushroom, only the Mario that gets the power-up will turn giant. You can edit the model of this spike bar that the enemy Spike throws, so you can make it look like Spike is throwing a Bowser Jr. in Super Mario 3D World. Or, you can make Spike throw another spike, where you can jump on the original Spike and damage him, but you can't jump on the spike that is thrown, because it's still technically a spike bar according to the game, so you take damage if you jump on this spike. You can also make spikes throw random enemies like Goombas and Koopas, but they disappear once they come in contact with each other, because spike bars normally explode when they touch each other. The funny thing is, and this this is different. If you make Spike throw Boom Boom, the Boom Booms don't actually explode on contact and they just keep stacking up like this. But eventually, Spike must run out of Boom Booms because he stops throwing the Boom Booms. I was trying to rotate around some bosses randomly in the Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury, and when I partially rotated the first Bowser boss fight of the game, I ended up making it look like Bowser was sinking into the ground over here and reaching out for help. I really recommend you watch my video where Mario has 100 mystery doors but only one lets him escape. That video has somehow had over 9 million views and I posted it almost one year ago. It is actually mind blowing how many people have seen that. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day ahead of you. And take care everybody.